So hello, welcome to the channel. So my name is Victor, and I'm going to be your anchor for this three months remote internship. And it's also a mentorship period. So, okay, uh, if you don't know me, uh, I'm the founder for Southtech. We have quite some subsidiaries. Uh, Krakachi is one of them. We are affiliates and accredited trainers, um, partners to Cisco, to Comtia, to AWS, and quite a lot of other uh, tech platforms. Now, we're bringing this internship because there is a need, there's a vacuum that needs to be filled. There's a void that we have in mentorship and in internship programs. And that's why I'm doing this for three months. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we need to go beyond training. We need to go beyond understanding cybersecurity. We need to start doing. So this is going to be a hands-on based internship. Okay, now there are several reasons why cybersecurity is slightly different from other areas in tech and why this approach of internship is very, very critical and very, very important. So for instance, in tech, we have software development, we have data analytics, machine learning, AI, we have product design, UI, UX, we have tech project management, we have quite a lot of areas in tech. Now, but cybersecurity is different because cybersecurity is you actually providing protection to digital assets, to digital infrastructure. And this digital infrastructure now amounts to other areas in tech. Might be trying to provide security, typically having the information of ele the elements of information security in web applications, networks, mobile apps, cloud technology. You want to protect these things. And in trying to protect these things and trying to make sure that you have confidentiality, you have integrity, you have availability, you have no reputation, you have authenticity. These are the elements of information security. So try to say, if you want to have information security, you must make sure that there is confidentiality. There's all of these things I just mentioned. Now, in doing that, it then means that you need to have some background in all of these areas. And one of the issues we have, and it's, it's not just out of you have typically every other uh, tech company out there trying to teach people how to do cybersecurity is the challenge where you have 60-70% of the curriculum being theoretical. And of course, you're going to have, even EC Council says that most of the curriculum should be 60% theory, 40% hands-on. And because it is actually difficult to get to cybersecurity without some good amount of knowledge base in tech. So you need to have some idea about programming. You should be able to do programming maybe in Python, in PHP, write basic scripts, maybe host a web application. You need to be able to understand networking. You need to understand cloud technologies, right? So because you need to be able to protect this infrastructure, it then means that you need to understand what you're trying to protect. So you can't protect what you can't set up. I repeat that again. You can't protect what you cannot set up. You can't protect or do digital forensics or do pen testing for a website that you can't set up. Yes, we know we have non-technical server security rules, but I'm talking about core technical server security rules. You typically cannot succeed without having some background, without having some base in infotech, right? In technology. And that's why Southtech, we are bringing this internship. Now, this internship is going to be 100% lab-based. So we have roughly about 180 labs that we're going to be doing across web, networks, our cloud, um, emails, right? Across different uh, types of uh, digital infrastructure. Now, over the last one year, uh, sounds like we've tried to like put out quite a lot of content to cover for the theoretical part of uh, most of our programs. And most of our physical programs, we've started transiting to uh, uh, transiting into making the class as, as near 80% as possible so that the students just can watch the videos, can do the read up. And what we're going to be doing in class is just going to be what? hands-on and hands-on. So here you're trying to learn by doing. In server security, for instance, for web applications, you want to learn how to set up a website. You want to learn how to do 
footprinting for that website. You want to learn how to do vulnerability assessment for that website. You want to learn how to do penetration testing for that website. Or you want to use web applications set up by other places. Of course, you have like um, done vulnerable web applications. You have uh, different e-commerce websites that are made vulnerable for cybersecurity analysts to actually learn how to protect websites. Because at the end of the day, your role, your job is to protect. Your job is to make sure that even if anything happens, that your system can bounce back. Your infrastructure can come bounce back. Your network, your mobile apps, all of those things can bounce back. And that's why we're bringing this internship. Now, the approach of this internship is going to be, or let me even talk about the content of the internship. So the internship is going to cover uh, uh, quite a lot of areas. Uh, so this is just like an overview of the labs for the internship. So it's going to cover networking. Now, most of the content we expect to prerequisites for this internship is already taken care of. So if you check the channel, uh, for the past one year plus, I've taken my time to do quite a lot of records on networking, right? I'm talking about the foundation. So if you want to do this internship, most of the foundation are covered for you. And you can also do those in the internship. An internship is completely for beginners. So you just need to have a laptop, have internet access, and have passion and be willing to get into cybersecurity. Even if you're an intermediate or a junior security analyst, you're going to find this internship very, very important. Because in this internship, you're going to be working on roughly about 180. Put it at 200 labs throughout the entire three months. It then means you're going to be learning by actually doing cybersecurity. So if you check the channel, you're going to see a complete series. Uh, if you go to uh, YouTube and just type Victor Chidi, uh, you see my full name, Victor Chidi, right? So you're going to see, go to the playlist session. So you're going to see stuff on digital forensics. Uh, this is a site that was hacked, that we show the entire series how it was fixed. You're going to see stuff in networking, uh, routing, switching, wireless essentials. You're going to see something on um, Security Plus. You're going to see something on Introduction to Networking. You're going to see something on penetration Testing. You're going to see something on Digital Forensics. You're going to see something on Web Programming. Penetration Testing, most of the times, is an IT project. So you're going to see something on Project Management. You're going to see something on uh, Cisco Cybersecurity Operations uh, Certification course. Now, most of these foundations have been taken care of. So this is networking, right? So we're going to run through the foundation. We're going to run through networking. Then we're going to run through networking labs. So you're going to learn how to install Windows, how to set it up. You're going to learn how to install Wireshark, how to configure Wireshark, how to view network information using Wireshark as a tool. Wireshark is like a, a network sniffing tool, right? You're going to understand firewalls, how to set up firewalls. You're going to learn about Mac. Mac is like a layer two type of address. You might not understand what I'm talking about now, but once you go through the networking curriculum, all of these things are going to be very well understood, right? So you have quite a lot of labs around hardware, networks, basics of tech. So you have roughly about 40 labs they are going to make you sound or give you an intermediate level skill set with respect to network hardware. Now, if you also check the channel, you're going to see, uh, okay, let me skip this. You're going to see quite a lot of content on web programming. You see, the challenge is that if you are told to do pen testing for a web application, okay, so how do you do pen testing? So you're going to go through a process, which is going to be, you do a security audit, you do a viability assessment, you now do a penetration testing. So to do penetration testing, you go through some steps, right? The first thing you want to do is to do a security audit. So what's security audit? You typically want to check up what you have, the uh, digital infrastructure you have. It can be a website, it can be a network, it can be a cloud application, it can be a mobile app. You want to check those stuff to make sure they conform to standards. Standards can be the NIST standard, it can be OAPs. 
uh, OAPS is Open Web Application Security Project. You could Google that, you can check that up. Now, uh, you want to see if this system is following some set of standards. Things like passwords, how are passwords? Uh, do, do you have an information security policy document? So you want to see, that's a, what an audit is, right? So once you're done with that, the next thing is you want to start doing vulnerability assessment. So in doing vulnerability assessment, you want to be checking uh, if there are loopholes, right? If there are loopholes within this digital infrastructure. Take for instance, if it's a network. So can people easily just access the network? Can people scan the network from IP addresses that are not allowed on the network? So you want to use either tools or do run a manual vulnerability assessment. So a vulnerability assessment is just going to check for loopholes, it's going to check for susceptibility of an attack, it's going to check how, how this conforms to standards. Then in penetration testing, what you're now doing, you're not trying to simulate an attack. In simulating an attack, you're trying to say, these vulnerabilities that I have found that, let's say vulnerability is that, okay, the password is not up to, uh, the password strength is not up to, let's say, 80% or 90%. And in the information security policy, uh, we said password strength must be up to a particular amount. Now, in pressure testing, we're not trying to attack for known vulnerabilities if we can have access to this particular system, right? If a known vulnerability, for instance, for a web application is that this website is still running, like some of the attacks I was working on last week, if this web application is still using, let's say, PHP version 5, when we're in PHP version 8 point something, right? It's still using Python 2, when we're in Python 3 point something, that's already a vulnerability because this application is going to be vulnerable to some um, exploits. So in pension testing, we're not trying to what? Attack this application based on the known vulnerabilities. So if you are going to do that as a tax you've been given, you're going to be using some tools and the tools are going to give you results. Let's say you are doing a tool like OAPS Zap. OAPS is Open Web Application Security Project. Then the name of the tool is Zap. So just a tool you could use to do vulnerability assessment. You open up the tool, you put the, the link, and you say, I want to run the vulnerability assessment for me. It's going to bring out the results. Now, you should have ability to be able to interpret those results then before you proceed to penetrating those vulnerabilities. It's going to tell you, okay, there's vulnerability in, let's say, encryption. There's vulnerability in um, exposing too much information. There's vulnerability in access control. There's vulnerability in maybe directory transversal. Maybe it's easy for people to transverse between the directories of the web application. So you want to, to have some idea about having to set up a simple website, having to do very bit assessment for a simple website. So these are the things that are prerequisites. So we're going to cover that in the internship. They also have a curriculum on the channel on pension testing. So everything that goes from planning your pension testing, doing for assessment, different types of attacks, the tools, how to communicate, because you see pension testing is actually project management. I've practiced project management for more than 10 years. And if I put pension testing side by side, project management, so you need a lot of project management skill set. And that's why on the channel too, I have a complete series on project management. You could use that, you must be in tech, you could be in security, you might be in healthcare, uh, you can be in any sector, right? Project management is very key because your understanding of project management will let you know how to communicate, how to report, how to write your scope document. Because you see some of these things are excerpts from project management. Scoping, right? A scope creep, right? Um, deliverables, right? Those are the kind of things that come into pension testing. And because you want to do this ethically, you want to do this within standards, you want to do this within norms, you want to do this within agreed norms, so agreed documents that you've already signed. So you see on the channel, there are quite a lot of materials on pension testing. Then of course you have some things on digital forensics. Uh, you have a complete series on A plus on CompTIA ITE Information Technology Essentials. They also have a complete content materials on Cisco CyberOps. Now, but that's not what the internship is about. The internship is about labs. 
So coming to this internship, we allow typically about four, five, six days for people to go through this content. There's going to be an exam. There's going to be a quiz. There's going to be a mentorship. There's going to be a guide for people to fix these prerequisites if you don't have this prerequisite. But the approach of the internship is going to be labs. So these are the labs. These are the labs we're going to work in on for networking. These are the labs we're going to be working on with respect to Cisco Cyber Ops. There are about, I think, 40 of them, or 45 of them, right? Because you learn here by doing. So, of course, you could you could research and know what is cyber security, uh, cyber security career areas, but your actual job is going to be you trying to fix stuff. Your job is going to be either preparing for an attack or when an attack happens, you want to fix. So if it's a website, how are you going to be able to prepare before the attack happens? If it's a web application, if it's a cloud application, if it's a network, right? If it's, a, if it's an asset that you have on any of the Google Cloud platforms, either Google Cloud or Azure or AWS, how are you going to prepare before the attack? And that's why it is lab-based, right? And of course, you have some labs on web programming. Now, the idea is not just to set up a website. No, right? Because yes, a security analyst or rather a, a, a person tester or a cyber security engineer should be able to set up a website. That shouldn't be your issue. But that is not the goal of being a security engineer. Your goal is to make sure that you can fix when there are issues, is to make sure that you can plan for an incident, that's incident response, the idea is that you can create an information security policy or a web security policy so that people don't set up systems that are going to be susceptible to hacks, right? So we're going to learn that one in penetration testing. We're going to learn how to create information security policy documents. The interns are going to collaborate. There are going to be some peer reviews, right? Students are going to be grouped, right? These guys are going to help us to provide from their learnings, are going to help us to provide an infosec for a, a policy for a bank, maybe for a school, maybe for a hospital, because these are different scenarios. Their digital assets are going to be different. Uh, what is going to, what's going to mean uh, an indicator, indication of compromise for each of these case studies are going to be different, right? Their attack surfaces, uh, let's say their websites, let's say their network, let's say the people, because people form a very concrete part of information security. That's where social engineering comes in, right? So somebody clicks a link and he's directed to a page, he enters, a login is not supposed to enter. The content is dropped on the, what was it called? Is dropped on the server and the person is now redirected to another website. So social engineering has play. And mapping in one of the labs in class, we created a script, a Google clone script for the questionnaire purpose, of course. And we told students to log in to have access to, to uh, training materials. Out of a few students, some students logged in and we were logging the passwords. And but we actually um, asterisk some part of the password so that it's not visible. I think one of those students didn't sign in. Be that he was an old student, he has taken, I think, our mobile app development course. And because Google signing, Facebook signing, Twitter signing, those platforms can be cloned. A simple tool like HTT track, HTT track, right? Can typically clone, or you can use, let's say, social engineering kit you have in, in uh, Linux, uh, Kali, or any of the distribution. You could clone it. Your ability to program can even help you do social engineering, uh, patient testing for organizations. You could create something that you can send out to them to test and to gauge their information security posture. Because it's only when you understand the posture of an organization, then you cannot improve their policy, then you cannot do education, you cannot do awareness. So there's a role of training, there's a role of awareness after you have done your job. So having these labs that have to do with web programming is very critical, it's very important. So the approach here is not just setting up websites. So we want to see how can we set up applications, very simple. This is not a web programming program or web programming class. 
So it's to make sure that you have intermediate level skill sets in web programming, it's to make sure that when you are running these tools and they give you a result, you can interpret, you can tell. Because I normally tell my students that the way it works in cybersecurity is that, you see 33% is for your knowledge base. It's for your definitions. You want to know how, you want to know when, you want to know what this thing is made up of. All of those theories, that's your knowledge base. Your next 3% is going to be your knowledge of, or your ability to use tools, to understand techniques, to understand tips. Not all hack are going to happen as a result of a tool. Some, it's just a technique. Social engineering, for instance, are techniques, right? Then the last 3% is your ability to be able to do countermeasures, to do vulnerability assessment, to do tool, to use, a, uh, to do training security awareness. You see these three aspects of becoming a security analyst, very crucial. First thing, the 3% is your knowledge base, right? Next to 3% is your ability to use tools. So you're not going to say, no, I don't need to know how to use tools to become security analyst. You do need to know. And of course, before you start using the tools, you want to be able to have solid knowledge base. And that's why these prerequisite courses are coming. Then your next 3%, you should be able to do audit, verbal assessment, patient testing. Then if you check the three numbers, 33, 33, 33, you have 99. There's always going to be a one to three percent, I typically say one percent of things you're never going to be able to see, things you're not going to be able to find out. You will not find out. That's why even Fortune 500, 100 companies, they still fall prey to attacks, right? So, to be an all round security analyst, you need a lot of theory, you need a lot of knowledge base. You need to, you, 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 you cannot be consulted to or you are being asked. Uh, to, to provide insight about, on, about how an organization is going to implement a WAF. You're not asking, what is a WAF? So WAF is a web application firewall. So just like you have a Windows firewall, you have a web firewall. You also have a firewall you can have on your network. You also have a firewall that you can have within cloud infrastructure, but most of the times it's going to be either uh, your network or your web application. So you see, you need to understand what that thing is before I start talking about, okay, what are the tools I can use or what are the scripts I can use to implement a WAF? You should be able to understand what is footprinting, what is reconnaissance, right? You should understand the theory behind it, why? You should understand the human, OSINT. Then you should start asking your questions, which tools, which techniques, which tips, can I use to either implement it? Or how can I do vulnerability assessment? How do I check all of these kind of things, right? So these are some of the labs we have in web programming. Uh, then we have some labs for digital forensics. For instance, we're going to be using autopsy, we're going to be using FTK manager, we're going to be using Sukuri, awesome tools, right? So we're going to learn by actually doing. Then you have for pen testing, you have around uh, 30 labs here quite detailed. If you go to southtechventures.com slash cybersecurity internship, you're going to see the details of the internship, right? Uh, the content of each of the uh, training of the, the curriculum is already there. Most of the theoretical parts, you're going to have this access to the slides, you're going to have access to the videos, and the focus is going to be typically on the labs. Okay, now I've explained some of the lab content of the five courses. So typically we have five courses for the internship. The first one is going to be networking for security analysts. So we're going to cover those foundations. Then we're going to do labs, about 40 of them. Then we have Cisco Cyber Ops. You're going to be getting a Cisco certification for this. Uh, is about uh, 45 labs. Then you have web programming is about 20 labs. You have digital forensics is about... 15 labs, then you have CompTIA pen test is about 30 labs. Then we have extra 30 labs we've added um, from one of our ethical hacking curriculum. So this covers things like um, Kali Linux, code exploitation, how to prepare for a pen test, scope and planning, how to do employee intelligence gathering, 
how to use some of the OSINT tools like uh, uh, OSINTframework.com, uh, how to use Wireshark, uh, how to do vulnerability assessment with Kalinux. If I open each of them, you see the, the labs are detailed instructions, right? So even students can even run this on their own. So it takes a lot to plan some of this lab. It takes a lot to compile some of these labs. And we have some of the labs already recorded on the channel, but the approach for the internship is that we're going to take four or five days theory for students to like lay their foundations for the ones that need to refresh, for the ones that need to like learn again. They will have a small quiz, a small exam. After the exam, we proceed for two weeks for the labs, right? Then we pick the next course. We take five days for the theory or six days for the theory. We write a quiz, then we go on the labs. And in doing those labs, we're going to have some projects, about three projects we're going to be working on. Like, for instance, this particular lab is so detailed, and you can click to see an answer. Uh, here, we're trying to use Nmap uh, using the command on this particular IP address, right? So what ports are currently open on the target computer? Like in network scanning, we're we'll talking about open ports, talk about closed ports, closed ports. So you need to have basics of networking first before you understand what a port is. So a port is just typically a line of communication, right? If I need to send light, for instance, to the next building, I need to get a wire and send. Depending on the type of light, that will tell the kind of cable I'm going to use, right? If I want to send video, I have to use a separate cable. If I want to send sound, I'm going to use a separate cable for my audio. If I want to send, let's say, uh, lighting, right? If I want to do fiber optics, infrared, uh, Bluetooth. So those are some of physical wires. So, right? So each of these items are just what we call ports. And each port have a type and have a port number. So if a port is open, it then means that port is in use by an application. And of course, you cannot hack what is not open. It's as simple as that. So this teaches you some of the fundamentals of doing either vulnerability assessment or penetration testing. So this is a very detailed lab. A detailed lab. So each of them have details, have the answers, right? Then you also have allows the how to do with OAPs, uh, uh, the, the security guide. So you're going to understand how to do web application security, uh, scans, uh, you have uh, SQL injection, you have password cracking, you have process scripting, you have reports. Reports are a very integral part of penetration testing. So you cannot do penetration testing without submitting a report. You cannot just go run your tools, do this, do this, do this. And every day, you have to present to your client that this is the things I have found out. These are the things that are susceptible to attacks. I think we can work on this. We need to remediate this immediately. We can leave this for a later date. That's what you have in the reports, right? So, and it has to be detailed. You have to tell your sponsor uh, your particular finding. Okay, so I've actually talked about why we need this internship the content of the internship, and I've told you the schedule. The schedule is going to be for 30 days. So it's going to be Friday, Saturday, Sundays. Uh, that's when we're going to have the live sessions. Then from Monday to like Thursday, that's when we're going to be having the WhatsApp, uh, communication, mentorship, asking of questions. I'm going to have like one, two, three trainers in the group to assist me. Then we're going to have a project, which I'm going to talk about later on. So that's what the schedule is like. So it's flexible. If you miss any class, the recordings are going to be available. We're going to be holding most of our live sessions on Zoom, right? And also going to be private and only available to students on this internship. After the internship, what's next? We're going to be supporting students to get entry-level rules, right? We have a HR department. The best and best of our students we're going to support them. We're going to help them to get entry-level roles. And for those that want to freelance, for those that want to, and that's why we're going to be working on about three projects, right? One of the projects is that we're going to be doing quite a lot of vulnerability research. Now, you can go get companies or you can prepare yourself and make yourself known for companies to get to you. And while the projects we're going to be working on is that we're going to be doing scanning, we're going to be doing vulnerability research for quite a lot of 
applications for networks. It's easier for us to run, uh, work on web applications because most companies have public facing web applications, right? Compared to network. So our focus is going to be web uh, and cloud, right? So we're going to be doing all of this and um, we're going to be collaborating together with the students uh, to work on most of these projects. The students are also going to be involved in creating scripts, to be creating Python scripts, PHP scripts, to be used for web, for OSINT, for network scanning, right? The students are going to be doing peer reviews, right? So in the internship, your success is going to be determined by how well you've done your own labs, your own project, you followed up on the lab, on the project. They're also going to be involved in supporting other students because actually that's what actually makes you an analyst. You want to solve problems. You want to solve issues, right? So you have about 150 labs. Then you have additional 30 labs. You have 150 labs. So if you check um, 40 plus... 45 plus 20, so that's 40 plus 45 plus 20 plus um, 15 plus 30. That's plus 15 plus 30. So you have 150 labs. Aside the 150 labs, we're also going to be working on the ethical hacker labs. So if you check, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14, we stopped around the F, uh, have, I'm, I've lost count. Okay, I think I should just check the folder where you have this particular document. So you have ethical hacker labs. So you have 31 in number, right? So these are the same labs. This is the folder I opened. Right, so you have about 31 labs, right? 31 labs. If you add, uh, what was it called? If you add, um, if you add 150 plus 31, you have roughly about 181. Then if you add the projects we're going to be working on here, so you have roughly about 200 labs. So 200 labs is sufficient for you to have a very nice CV that you can be proud of and that you can use to either freelance or get an entry level role. Okay. So we're going to be starting on the 1st of December and we're going to last for about three months. So how do you sign up? You can contact uh, um, us through, uh, if you're watching via the channel, you can contact us through the websites. So if you get to, uh, server security, southadventure.com slash server security internship, you're going to see all of the details, right? You have the account number, you have the payment details. Once you have signed up, you just need to send a mail or send a, uh, a, a message on WhatsApp. You're going to be sent a receipt. You're going to be sent uh, uh, a welcome email. Then you're going to be added to the mentorship group. If you have any question, don't forget to ask. I would love to see you in the mentorship group. Uh, Thank you and awesome day ahead.